All right there, folks, uh, back again for another video. Um, in this one, we're going to be talking a little bit about Rings of Power. Now, before we start things off with this discussion, um, I should say that uh, I quite enjoyed the series. Um, I've read The Silmarillion, I've read The Unfinished Tales, I've read Lord of the Rings, I've read The Hobbit, I've read a whole bunch of other stuff from Tolkien, um, and even though there are still a whole bunch of things in it that I would change personally, I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a fun series, I thought they did a pretty decent job, I'd give the uh, entire series a good old sort of 8 out of 10, probably, uh, and I can't wait to see what they do with subsequent series, because more Tolkien is great, Tolkien DV series are awesome, and um, as someone mentioned, I think it was in Earth of the Rings on his channel, you can't have good adaptations without adaptations. So people have got to make them for things to get better and change and learn and all that kind of thing. So there we go. That out of the way. I enjoyed it. I know people didn't. I know people did. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But anyway, so um, taking things into the realm of miniature wargaming, um, you will have realised from the title of this video that this is sort of focused on the idea of what would happen if Games Workshop got the license to make miniatures for the Rings of Power TV series. Now, we've not heard anything about this at all, really. Uh, they kind of offhand mentioned it when they talked about the release of the new big box set that came, well, that is coming this December and was up for pre-order earlier in the year. Um, you know, because obviously people were very excited about that and there was a new Elrond and a new High Elf and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and in most cases, I would imagine that Games Workshop are probably going to be sticking to what they have um, access to from the films and all that kind of thing. But if they did get the Rings of Power license, what kind of miniatures would, be, would we be looking to see on the tabletop? So... The most obvious question would be they'd have to make a set that was based around, at least initially, a fight. Uh, now, there are going to be lots and lots of spoilers for the Rings of Power in this um, episode, so if you've not seen it or if you're halfway through or whatever, then maybe skip um, this uh, and come back later. But later on in the series, around episode 6, we get a fight in the Southlands, which is this location here. Now this seems to me like a pretty prime location for them to build a starter set or an initial launch set around the Rings of Power. You have this basis in the Southlands that then becomes Mordor later on. Um, you have a lot of different miniatures that you can draw from for both the uh, the townsfolk of the Southlands, the Southlanders, um, alongside character models, and of course the Orcs and Adar and all that kind of stuff. You could set it up as a scenario box, I suppose, where you have a couple of different scenarios where you have maybe Arondir's fight at the tower, um, where he ambushes Adar and the Orcs and brings the tower down on them. You could then have the subsequent ambush by the, the Southlanders on the Orcs as they come into the town, and then it's revealed that they're fighting against some of the humans and stuff that have been brought into Adar's service. And then you could have the last little bit of that section of that fight which is then played out with the at arrival of the Numenorians, uh, with Queen Miriel and Galadriel, uh, where they all gang up together to fight against the Orcs um, as the sun's coming up and all that kind of stuff, just before things go ham, as it were. But yeah, so I think that would be a pretty darn good setting for that. And because of that, obviously, as I said, we get a good selection of different miniatures. Um, I, for one, uh, um, was totally sold on the aesthetic of the Orcs, that they did for uh, the Rings of Power. I really like the use of practical effects um, and it made a massive difference to me, especially after seeing a lot of the CGI effects that we got in The Hobbit and stuff. So having access to practical orcs that all look different and unique and cool, I think would be really fun. And of course this means that they translate really nicely into wonderful models as well because you have these lots of different textures going on. You have all the animal skins and the scales that they're wearing to try and keep the sun off their bodies. You have all the different character style orcs that were included in this as well. So you can see a few of them here that were included. A couple of these didn't make it out of the out of the slave pit attack, I suppose, but um, you know, a bunch of these managed to fight their way through to that Southlands encounter. So you can have a whole host of different characters on the orc side. So maybe you'd have a couple of the slightly more named orcs. I know some of them were definitely named because Jed Brody and a bunch of other people um, played named characters within that orc collection. And if you see them on the subtitles, you'll see the names usually listed. And I think one of them was called like Vrak or something. I think. Um, 
And then of course, leading the bad guys, you have Adar himself, who is your Uruk, which is one of those, uh, the elves that was first twisted and turned by Morgoth and Sauron back in the day. Um, so you have Adar leading the way for the evil forces, if you're going to be putting together a little bit of a starter box, I suppose, for the Rings of Power on the tabletop. And then of course, on the good guy side of things, we have a couple of different heroes. So obviously you have Adar and a couple of named orcs, and then a bunch of the orcs, and maybe some of the humans dressed as orcs, to use within your army, your sort of star set army. And on the other side, of course, we have the likes of the mighty Elendil leading the way. I was a massive fan of the armor design for Elendil. I thought it was really cool. Um, I was very much uh, reminded of kind of Greek, Roman, that Atlantean aesthetic, almost Minoan Crete style of, of armor and look, which I thought was really nice, mixed in with slightly more traditional... Uh, sort of classic medieval armour as well uh, and I like all the use of the fish scales and the fish scale motif across them which kind of ties them to the sea and all that kind of thing so you'd have maybe a Lendil leading the way you'd probably then have models for a couple of other different characters I'm not sure whether or not we'd get an Isildur um, but of course you're going to get yourself an Arondir uh, the Sylvan Elf with his uh, sort of green man style armour there which obviously evokes the uh, the look of the Ents and things from the world of Middle Earth, but you'd have a Ron Deer in that kind of kit, um, where he's kind of cobbled together a bunch of stuff that he was able to find in the tower um, to use when he was defending the humans in the Southlands, uh, and then of course you know bringing Galadriel as well. Uh, so I have Galadriel, uh, Galadriel, <laughs> Galadriel fighting in her new armor as well. So you have her doing kick-ass stuff. Maybe you have may, uh, potentially a mounted version for her and then an on-foot one. She spends most of her time on, on horseback, so you can maybe have a mounted character in there just to throw some things in. Of course, you could also then have Halbrand too, um, although we don't obviously have I don't have any pictures of Halbrand here, um, but that's because he could be anyone. No. <laughs> As I said, spoilers. Uh, but yes, so um, you could have Halbrand in there too, but obviously I think that then kind of shifts the dynamic of the heroes in the box set so you'd want to try and mirror it quite nicely so i think having a numenorian in the in the in in in, in elendil having an elf maybe in either arondir or galadriel uh, and then throwing halbrand as well i think obviously would be a quite neat little collection uh, and then maybe one of the additional miniatures could come out separately later and be used as an addition to the box set and stuff like that which would be quite nice i just wanted to show off a couple more of the images of the uh the look of the uh, Numenorians. So here, there's Isildur, uh, sat astride his horse. So you could have Isildur and Beric uh, mounted up if you wanted to in the starter set as well. But again, I really like the armor style. I think it's kind of cool. Um, it would be really nice to paint, I think, especially if you manage to get the armor with that textured detail on the scales, which you tend to see them do quite a bit, actually, with uh, Games Workshop stuff nowadays. They tend to throw a lot more texture into the mix, so you'd probably have that in there too. You maybe have, like, let's say, what well, you want a good balance stuff. So all the orcs are going to be on foot, obviously. Uh, and you'd have some named characters in there and maybe some heroes and stuff that you could use to kind of balance it out. On the other side of things, I'd say maybe you're going to get, like, what would you do? Ten Southlanders, maybe? Ten Southlanders. Uh, are sort of the peasants. And then maybe have five mounted Numenorians in the set. Uh, I think that could be kind of cool. So you could have five mounted Numenorians and then ten of the Southlanders against, say, 20 of the Orcs. And then you have a whole bunch of the different characters in there. I'm going to mix and match those. Obviously, there is a slightly more heavier armour design for the Town Guard or the Palace Guard in um, Numenor proper. So this is, like, more or less their official military and these are the conscript-style militia that they used in the in the TV show, but it would be nice to see some options for those obviously later on down the line and that kind of thing. But yeah, I think if we were going to be doing a starter set for the Rings of Power, I think the focus would have to be on something that was a pivotal fight, because they tend to do that with a lot of the box sets they've done in the past. So we had obviously had Balin's Tomb, which was uh, the one for Lord of the Rings. Then we had Escape from Goblin Town, um, which was for The Hobbit. Um, and then obviously moving into... Um, Additional sets we've had, you know, the fight on Pelennor Field with the Rohirrim versus the Orcs uh, and uh, the Witch King of Angmar. And then, of course, with the new one, we're going to get that fight in Osgiliath. Um, so having a signature fight would probably make a lot of sense. So to kind of sum up, maybe if we were going to be looking at doing a starter set for the Rings of Power, 
we'd maybe have it set in the Southlands, based around that period around episode six, where there's the big fight. Um, you'd have a cup. You'd have a big chunk of orcs with maybe three or four hero orcs thrown into the mix. I think perhaps would be kind of cool. Although of course those orcs could probably just be used as regular orcs as well if you're expanding things and playing around with it. And then on the good side of things, maybe a good chunk of Southlanders, maybe ten or so Southlanders, five mounted Numenorians done in this kind of style that we saw on the horseback, which I think would be quite nice. And then you'd have to make a decision about the characters. So I would personally pick um, Elendil. Uh, Aaron Deer and probably Halbrand but I think if you were going to be doing it the other way around if you had to try and give like a good sense of characters and stuff I think you'd have Elendil Galadriel and Halbrand because I think they'd be the key fig figures there and then you'd maybe have Aaron Deer added in potentially it depends if you because obviously with the evil side you'd have Adar put in there so this chap at the top you'd have Adar because he's like the main leader and then maybe if you had Arondir, so maybe, yeah, I think that would probably balance out. You'd have four characters for good, four characters for bad, and then a bunch of core troops. They threw three characters into the, um, uh, three characters, and then obviously Gothmog mounted and unmounted into the Battle of Oscalia set. So um, I could definitely see them doing something in that same vein with a lot of characters, and then a selection of different troops for them to lead on the tabletop. Uh, so that would be my thoughts for a starter set, uh, but moving on beyond that, there's also a couple of other fights that you could see made into box sets in the future. I mean, obviously, I have no knowledge of any, if any of this is ever going to become true, but uh, we shall see. Um, the, one of those in particular, I think, would be the fight where we have Galadriel and her elven expeditionary force up in the north in Fododwaith, um, fighting against the snow troll in that um, citadel that once belonged to Sauron. So you'd have the elves in that set, so you'd probably get all the different elves, I would imagine, from that encounter. It's quite hard to find screenshots of individual fights and stuff for these different these elements, but this gives you a good idea. So you'd have those, you'd have that slightly more lightly armoured look to uh, Galadriel with the chain mail and the, and the slightly more um, armoured leggings, and obviously she's got a gauntlet on there as well. Uh, and then you have those ragged cloaks and those really awesome big swords, which I think are really cool. Um, going the idea of them being kind of like bastard swords almost, which I think is quite nice to see because you tend to see very elegant, sort of um, thinner looking elven weapons, but I like quite the look of them having those bigger weapons. And then you'd maybe have that coming up against just the snow troll. So you'd maybe do a set that was the snow troll encounter, um, and you'd have the big old snow troll, and you'd have Galadriel and some of her elves that'd be fighting against it, and that would be a little box set. I don't imagine that would probably be a very balanced scenario because they'd probably just kill the snow troll very easily but that would be an interesting little box set I think for people to play out and you could obviously do a scenario based around it which would be quite nice the other big fight that I suppose we see in the uh, in the show is the slave pit encounter so this is when the when Arondir and uh, the rest of the elves and a bunch of the Southlanders have been captured by the um, by the orcs the Uruks uh, and put to work um, digging the trenches that will eventually lead the water to uh, Orod Druin. Um, uh, so you could have a set here which would be based around the, you know, Arondir in a different style of outfit alongside the Watch Warden and a bunch of his friends from the, uh, the Sylvan Elves from the Tower. Um, and then you could have that them coming up against um, uh, the Orcs again. So obviously we saw a little bit of a look at some of the Orcs here. So that's the Orcs that we saw in the encounter in the slave pit so you have some named characters going on there and then of course here's a couple of close-ups of them as well because again I just love the makeup and the design and the practical effects really just 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 blow things out of the water I think that's amazing uh, but yeah so yeah just a couple of other ideas for scenario sets I think it could be really fun playing around with that and then of course I reckon we'd see them do um, sort of individual sets Building on that, that would um, explore a lot of the other different characters from the movies, well, from the movie, from the TV show. I watched it all in one big go yesterday, so I, I kind of see see it as like an eight-hour movie, eight and a half-hour movie. But anyway, um, yeah, I think it'd be fun to see them. Then, obviously, you'd have uh, a bunch of the the mystics that have come together in a set. You get the stranger, you get the hobbits, and you get the hobbit, the hobbits. You get the Harfoots, uh, and you could do some interesting scenarios based around them, I think would be really fun. Um, but yeah, obviously one of the big things is that if you're making a strategy battle game, you want to have some battles. And so I think that gives us a good idea of what we'd be looking at if we were coming at things from the point of view of a starter set, maybe for the Rings of Power, 
uh, based around the models, uh, well, the models and the characters and stuff that we'd got in that particular fight. Uh, and then some couple of other ideas as well thrown out into the mix at the same time. Um, yeah. I just wanted to also bring up some interesting stuff. So, uh, as a little bit of an aside to kind of finish off the video, there's an artist that I absolutely love. Um, he has been, uh, well, they've been drawing a whole bunch of uh, amazing artwork for a really long time that kind of, I think, captures both the first and the second age really, really nicely. Now, as I say, I really like the design of the armor. Uh, and generally the costumes and weaponry as a whole, really, from the Rings of Power. I thought it was all really, all really well done. Um, but uh, there there are some sort of designs and ideas from around the First and Second Age that I think would be really nice to see realised in miniatures, either by Games Workshop, probably not, uh, but potentially by other people out there in the world. It would be fun to see you work with uh, Turner Mohan in order to make this a reality. But, for example, here's some of the designs for Glorfindel and Ecthelion. Uh, for some of the elven artwork from kind of the first and second age, which I think was really nice. I love the sort of the look and feel of these, which kind of is, evokes the feel of the helmets and the armor worn in the Peter Jackson movies, but also has something a little bit more regal and ancient about their design and stuff. Uh, he, uh, they've also done a really nice job on uh, artwork for the Numenorians and designing their armor style. Um, and so, for example, here's like a look at the kind of Again, that Greek, Minoan, Crete, Cretan aesthetic, Atlantean aesthetic, which draws on the look of the sea being a key feature of their um, their civilization and, and their way of living. And I, I just love these armor designs and think they're phenomenally stylistic and I'd love to see miniatures done in this way. This is kind of how I viewed Numenorians looking before obviously seeing the Rings of Power. And of course, you know, people can change their ideas and have characters and races and factions look however they want really um, but I just wanted to bring these up because they are absolutely stunningly beautiful and uh, a really nice kind of look at um, some alternative designs for sort of Numenorians and stuff from the second age if you're actually interested in looking, learning a little bit more about what Turner does um, it's well worth going to go and check out their DeviantArt page so here it is I'll have it linked down below as well so you can have a look so this is a little bit of their Tolkien sketchbook which shows us some of the stuff they've been working on there's Glaurung and Turin. Oh my god, Turin, Turin Bar. What a man. I love Turin. It's amazing. <laughs> um, here's just some of the sketches you can see there. And then there's a couple more here looking at Numenor in more detail. I think it's really cool. So you've got Erendil there. Um, some really nice stuff. But yeah, definitely worth having a look at some stuff from uh, Turner Mohan if you are interested in the second age and the first age and want some more inspiration for miniatures and designs. Uh, if you're going to be uh, looking and using some of those designs, obviously it would be really nice to go and talk to Turner, I think, and get their input at all, on it all. I think that'd be really cool. But yeah, there we go. Uh, let me know what you think. There's a little bit of a, a tangent at the end there, but w what do you think about a Rings of Power miniatures line from Games Workshop and how they would come about doing it? I think, as I say, it would be good to have a starter set based around um, that sort of fight in the Southlands around episode six. Uh, I think that'd be a good starting point because you get a whole bunch of miniatures and it's a big old fight and this is a strategy battle game after all uh, but there are obviously a couple of other options there as well if you wanted to go down the route of doing little tiny sort of bespoke vignettes almost drawn from the Rings of Power TV series and again I think it'd be really fun to see uh, Games Workshop tackle miniatures designs based on these because when you look at the orcs and how they've come together I think it's wonderful I love all the scaly skin it'd be amazing to see people paint these especially bringing in some of the other armor designs from the other races and factions obviously imagine Arondir with that amazing sculpted armor I think that would come out beautifully with washes and highlights and things it would be lovely uh, that would be great with Slapshop I reckon <laughs> and then obviously you've got Adar and uh, Elendil himself Man, love Elendil uh, if if it wasn't for the bromance between uh, um, Elrond and Durin, Prince Durin, uh, in Casa Doom, then Elendil would get my top spot. Uh, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, a few interesting little thoughts there, I suppose, on Rings of Power. Uh, I'm not interested in talking about how this is destroyed Tolkien's legacy or any of that kind of nonsense. Um, so if you want to share those thoughts. Sure, go ahead, but I'm probably not going to 
uh, respond to you. There we go. <laughs> That's the end of that discussion, I suppose. Um, but uh, if you have any thoughts about how they, this would develop into a miniatures game and all that kind of stuff, um, then make sure to get your comments down below. Um, as always, you can uh, like, share and subscribe and do all those good things if you enjoy what I do. Um, and uh, yeah, commenting is great. I just love having a dialogue with people and uh, talking through things and stuff like that. Uh, but don't yeah, don't be mean. Let's not be mean to people. All right. Let's just let's just let people enjoy things. Right. And uh, yeah, uh, if you like what I do and you wanted to support me uh, additionally, there is also a Ko-fi link down below uh, where you can go and uh, donate whatever you like uh, for a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Um, all proceeds from that end up going straight back into the channel. Um, so I've used them to buy models for painting and building Middle Earth and uh, hopefully I'll show them off in the future. Uh, I am working on some things in the background, I just need to make sure that everything comes together nicely as it were, but there we go. But you don't have to. Uh, just commenting, liking, sharing and doing all that good stuff is great for me. Especially if you're over on Twitter or Facebook and you want to share it with your friends in groups and that kind of thing. That would be really awesome. There we go. Let me know what you think. Do you think that sounds like a good idea for a starter set? Which of the characters do you think would be in the starter set? What kind of other vignettes and little packages could they put together if they were going to be approaching the Rings of Power as a starter set for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game? Let me know. Uh, I'm going to move on and uh, get ready for more videos and stuff and do some research and all that kind of good stuff. And I'll see you again very soon. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a lovely time. Hope you had a nice time hobbying away while you're probably listening to me here. And uh, I'll see you again later. Bye for now.